He's clearly tired of me messing around. He's clearly ready to go outside. And I don't blame him. For about an hour, I've been trying to verify my Google AdSense account so they'll send me the check. And it seems like no matter how much information I put in, they need everything except for almost a fingerprint. And I still have a thing that says it's still on hold. So I don't know. We're going to get our day started. He's bored to death. Well, good morning, Lionhearts. As you can tell, I, uh, I got a little carried away with the uh, hair gel. A little, uh over-anxious, I guess. Just squirted too much in, but uh, hanging out for a little bit. John and I are out for our morning walk, and uh, Kevin has to swing by again because, and I warned him, he dropped his uh, internet provider and signed up with AT&T, and I had AT&T for seven years, and I had seven years of grief, and I told him, I said, don't do it, and so they told him he had to be home all day Saturday. He stayed home all day Saturday, they never showed up, and then when he called them, they said, we knocked on your door and nobody answered. They went to the wrong building. Um, well, actually, they had the wrong phone number, which is the same thing they did to me when I got it hooked up with them. And then, the second time, they said that they had the wrong building. So now they need him to come, or they need to come back tomorrow, but he works, so he asked me if he could drop off his keys and me and Jog go over there and hang out and wait for the uh, cable people, or well, the internet people, it's at and so. Yeah, I warned him. I warned him as much as I could. And, uh, you know, what can you do? We only have two options out here in Southern California, if you can believe that. So, the other thing is that I scheduled um, an appointment for my new headshots. So, I'm going to get a new headshot on like February 13th, it looks like, unless that changes. So, I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go on another heavy juicing diet. Not all juice this time. I think what I want to do. I want to experiment a little bit. I'm going to do mostly juice and canned tuna, like heavy protein, and see what happens. And, uh, and I'm going to do yoga during that time. And part of the problem was I had a really great Pilates video that I was really good at, and I really loved it. It was only 22 minutes, but I got in good shape doing it. All of a sudden, the sound quit working whenever I would play a DVD or Blu-ray. And so my friend came over and got it fixed about a month ago, and I just hadn't got back into doing it. So... You're going to see some stuff happening here in the next two weeks, so just to warn you. Like I said, it's not going to be completely a juice cleanse only, but it's going to be primarily and heavy proteins. I'm, like I told you guys yesterday, I have a uh, doctor's appointment for an x-ray, and I'm going to do some vlogging downtown. So as soon as Kevin gets here, drops off the keys, I'm out of here. Now the reason I'm going to eat protein, like have the tuna, is because uh, the last time I did the juice cleanse, I was getting muscle cramps real bad because I wasn't taking in protein and I was a little bit more active than you're supposed to be. And I want to be somewhat active during this, uh, this thing, so if I take in some protein, I should be okay. Train time. Whee! Oh, we made it downtown. I think where I'm going is that way. Well, there it is. Probably the most requested place that anybody has ever had for me to go is the Bradbury building. Now it looks like there's a subway partially occupying it, but here it is. Now, of course, I assumed that this had some significance or some sort of connection to Ray Bradbury, and it had none. It's actually a, kind of an oil tycoon named Lewis Bradbury who commissioned this thing to be built in 1980 or 1892. And uh, if you can believe it, it actually wasn't finished till 1893, right after he died. He never got to see it. But this has been the host of many, many movies. Many movies. In fact, and we're going to go inside. In fact, this was, a, now it's kind of like a hot spot because they've turned it into a historical landmark. But uh, this building actually fell into disrepair 
for quite a while. And uh, it was used for a ton of movies that needed like a low key kind of dingy place with uh, some great architecture in the 50s, 40s, and then the 70s, it was pretty much just a run down crap hole. And uh, so when you saw it in Blade Runner, which is what it's probably most not noted for, and you would see it in Blade Runner, the creepiness that it contained while it was in Blade Runner was actually pretty true. That's actually why they used it, because it had kind of just fallen into disrepair. Now, in 2011, they actually filmed the silent movie that won Best Picture, The Artist, here. Which I thought was just awesome. Because I love the movie, I love silent movies, and this was just classic. So let's go walk around and look around. Let's see, of course, they have the sign from Blade Runner, as I had already mentioned. Right from the top. I'm trying not to get glare. But what's crazy is a lot of the reasons that the movies in the 50s would use this was because of that kind of creepy lighting that would come through the top of that architecture. And now most of the stuff that you would have seen, like uh, when you see the scene, oh, and here's the, the elevator. Here's actually the other entrance, and uh, a lot of the scenes that you saw from uh, from the artist were actually right up there on that landing right up there. And I'll see if I can't get those clips and kind of add them in, but they said that I can do minimal walking around because this is a functioning um, building and business. But I guess there are signs that will tell me where I can go and where I can't. And I think that's one of them. Check that out. That amazing elevator. Now I don't want to do too much talking through this because most of the scenes of Harrison Ford would have been on these stairwells and up here on that second floor because they could always get really great lighting and I don't think I'm allowed to go up there but you can actually see a lot of the scenes from the artist right there in fact they were right on that landing right there That's actually where he would have ran into her and she would have told him that she just got a contract and that's where he would have told her that he's been released. And kind of the mentorship has ended. The mentor is now a passing fad and the new fad is the mentee. But I, I just love, look at the architecture to this. Even the, the banisters and everything. And I would, I would tell you that from everything I read, a good portion of what has kept this building, what made it a historical landmark, was the fact that it's been used for quite so many movies. I mean, in the 50s especially. The 50s, they used it for easily 10 to 15 movies because it was an inexpensive location and, uh, and you could create a lot of depth through the different floors. You could actually film the whole thing in here and it wouldn't have... Uh, you wouldn't have had to have a second rental space because it was so, you could create so many levels with uh, the different architecture and the different floors. There's the old letterbox chute. And his old classic style elevator doors, the wrought iron doors that you would have seen in Blade Runner.
So during the filming of Blade Runner, they, like I said, in the 70s, this had really fallen into quite a bit of disrepair. But um, what they did was they just added a bunch of smoke, threw a little bit of debris on the floor, and just with the, the natural lighting kind of reflecting off of it, plus the, the crazy stairwells and just the crazy architecture in here, really created a vibe. And uh, this is actually where you would have seen, this was her, where her apartment was in the abandoned toy factory. Now, I was told I can go up this other stairwell, so I'll go up here and I'll show you what I'm allowed to show you from here. These beautiful marble stairs. And uh, like I said, it's gonna be—it's a, a little hard to catch it without the glare, because uh, it's a little harder to catch it without the glare because of that ceiling, that highly beautiful illuminated ceiling. But I happened to be down here for my doctor's appointment. I just thought, you know, I've had a lot of requests for this, and I think people just really want to see it. I actually can't go past this floor, but right here where this corner is, that's the corner you see Harrison Ford peeking around when he's walking up this, this uh, walkway. Like I said, if I can find any footage that I can match up, I certainly will for you. There you go, the Bradbury building. There's the old pulley system elevator going up. Pretty old school, think of that. This place has been here since, it started in 1892 and then finished in 1893. Beautiful architecture. And if you were wondering what was on the other side of the Bradbury building, it's this. I'm gonna wait till traffic frees up a little bit. I'm gonna run across the street and give you a wide shot of what the front of the building looks like. There you go. And this is actually, I believe, I believe this is the doorway that Harrison Ford pulls up in. Because, uh, because the other side of the street's actually what, like a, uh, not quite as narrow as this was in the movie. So I, I believe he would have pulled up right in front of here. All right, I got like 20 minutes to get to my doctor's appointment. Let's do this. Find out what's up with my finger. Wow, look at this 3D art. It's like made out of gears and old circuits and all kinds of old scrap metal. Wow, that's pretty cool. I don't always take uh, the same streets and stuff when I'm down here, so this is the first time I've actually seen that. God, I love that kind of creativity. God, I love that. It's like a close-up of some of the stuff, how they did it. Look at that. I may have to go check that out at some point. Walking across the freeway. See guys, I walk everywhere. Took the train downtown. I've probably walked 20 blocks now since I've been down here for the hour and a half. I think I'm gonna be right on time to the minute. long enough for the elevator and it never came so now I just decided to take the stairs. Ridiculous. Finally. Well guys, as with most things, there was good news and there was bad news. The bad news is that they are convinced that um, the bump of my finger is a tumor because it's, uh, it's hard and it's not squishy and they're just not sure if it's a tumor on uh, the nerve, on a tendon, they're just not sure. So they're sending me to another specialist. I have to go get an MRI. The, uh, the only good news or the only positive thing is that he said it's probably not cancerous because it's very kind of rare for a 
to get uh, a cancerous tumor on your hand, but they're pretty sure it's a tumor. Hey, Will, look, it's cranes. Look at the eye. Is it just me or is it weird to see an outhouse or a uh, temporary Andy Gump, as Phil Hendry would call it, inside of a building? It's weird to me. Man, when I told you guys I got heavy-handed with the hair gel, I wasn't kidding, man. It took all day for this crap to wear out. Usually I can run my hands through it and it won't be quite so slick looking, but dang. Looks like I got home at the right time. Jeez Louise. There's a party happening somewhere. What is happening to my neighborhood? Is this gonna turn into a, a Transformers movie? Or has Lincoln Hawk moved to my neighborhood? I don't get it. I'm, I'm not even gonna say anything. I'll let the crap speak for itself. My sidewalks. Well, what a weird day. I don't really have much to say right now. I don't really know what to say. I listened to a lot of music tonight. That was fun. And, uh, yeah, I think I'm just gonna call it a night. Hope you guys have a... Hope you guys had a great day. And I hope, uh, you enjoyed the Bradbury Building. If you like this video, please, uh, give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hollywood, California. Good night.